everybody, and welcome to this week's installment of the Collingwood Big Footy Board podcast. I am your host, the Mighty T, and joining me tonight, I have a, a, a fully loaded panel. Um, we have, fresh from his overseas sojourn, uh, 76 Wooden Spoon, or 76, how are you this evening? Uh, yeah, I'm doing all right. I'm uh, still licking the wounds from Saturday night. Uh, wasn't wasn't too happy about that, but uh, slowly slowly getting things back together and pulling myself together. Yeah, it's been a hard weekend for all of us. We also have podcast first timer Hoggy. Hoggy, how you doing, mate? Yeah, not too bad. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Struggling along as uh, as always. Um, we also have Old Spice, who hasn't been on the show since uh, since our maiden maiden voyage. Am I right there, Old Spice? Yeah, that's right, and for good reason. Well. <laughs> performance. Uh, I hope to, you know, uh, come off a long run like Hoggy and uh, live some gold tonight. Yeah, we've all noticed that the uh, ratings have dramatically increased uh, since you haven't been on, so we'll keep that in mind. And also, I'd like to introduce our board goal-kicking game champion for this year, Magpie Girl. How are you, Magpie Girl? Hi, Mighty T, and thank you. I, get, I think all my barracking for you uh, paid off oh, uh, over the last couple of weeks. Made all the difference. <laughs> Made all the difference. Well, unfortunately, all the barracking I could do couldn't make the difference on Saturday night. Um, I managed to get down to the game. It's probably the last final I'm ever going to attend. Um, where Collingwood was resoundingly, in my opinion, beaten by the Port Adelaide Football Club. 76, what did you think of the game? Um, where did it all go wrong? Oh, look, I think um, it was a terrible, terrible game to watch. It was... Um I was wondering when the when the club was going to turn up. I just think that we didn't have the intensity that we'd shown in previous weeks. I think Port Adelaide certainly had come up to play. They um, they, they they made us look like you know, amateurs, and um, you know we we just weren't prepared. Uh, there's been a lot of publicity surrounding Eddie Maguire this week and how he um, perhaps might have come across as a bit a bit bit cocky and thinking beyond beyond last weekend. Uh, Port Adelaide certainly used that as ammunition against us, as motivation against us, and mm-hmm. they worked hard, they ran hard, they ran hard both ways. Uh, it was a full team effort, and um, look, we were just lacking, and not just from the players as well, but also some of the, the coaching moves were a bit a bit confusing. We had Lachlan Keith, who hasn't played in the forward line for probably 18 months now, and he's only a you know, a young twenty game or so player and we you know we saw him there up in the forward line and, and being a backup ruck, which he hasn't done this year. And I thought it was a bit strange given that we've had other players that I thought might have been ahead of him. So there are a few few strange things going on there. I don't know quite to make of it, but um what is done is done and can't change it now. Uh, absolutely correct. Hoggy, what were your thoughts on the game? Did you manage to get down and um do you concur with our seventy sixes thoughts? Oh, he's pretty much spot on like I actually went to the uh, fixture during the year at Football Park and had a big rant, just really loud rant in the terraces five minutes in the last quarter, and it was just a complete replica. And it was as if Buckley didn't notice that two tall forwards, Cloak and on the first occasion was Lynch, this time was Reed. It wasn't enough, and we've been playing really well with three up there. And as, mm-hmm. as was mentioned, Lockie Keefe wasn't up to it, it wasn't his fault. And listening to the Triple M commentary on the night, Nathan Brown made the point and said, he's been the best centre-half back in the competition the last eight weeks, mm. and now he's a ruck. Yep. And it just seemed that, I, I know in modern football, there are very few, quote, chess moves that have to be made by coaches these days, but Buckley did not make the right chess moves. And another one was having Heath Shaw just sitting five metres out on the goal line against Monfries. Yep. Why not put Marley Williams there, move Heath Shaw up the ground? And I, I love Marley Williams, but the one thing he does, he's, he chops it by foot. Mm. And he made a few blues. And he wasn't the only one. Like, Pen, Pendery kicked the ball out of the full at one stage. Mm. And that's when I sort of started getting worried. But um, mm. I, I rate Port Adelaide as a team. I reckon they're a big chance of knocking off Geelong this week. So I wasn't particularly disappointed at the pro, at the thing about losing Port Adelaide. Oh, I, I think I think you're right. I think I was more disappointed in the performance than anything else. You, and you touched on a few issues there. Spicy, what did you think of, A, the coaching moves, uh, B, the selection, and um, and the way we approach the game in general? Yeah, look, uh, 
I, I kind of understand some of those those questions around, you know, like uh, Shaw and and um, and keep going forward. I, I, I think the thing is, like, Schultz was the only tall forward threat for Port Adelaide that night, and I think they thought, you know, Brown was going to cover it. And the reality was that we weren't getting any any action, any momentum um, up in the forward line with, with Reed and Cloak. And I, I think they probably sent uh, Keith forward <clears throat> in order to stretch, you know, the, t- the tall defenders and give Cloak an option. But as it happened, you know, he kind of got in the way. But that's not his fault. As you yep. said, he hasn't played the position. The last time he played was when Mick put him up forward against Carlton uh, a couple of years ago. Um, and he got it, you know, he doesn't know the running patterns got in quotes away once or twice. Um, look, the, the thing about, you know, um, Shaw is, you know, people drag him back, you know, like it's, I, I don't think people, you know, kind of saying you play full back, but that people know to drag uh, Shaw back, right? So, you know, who's going to play on Monfries, you know, like, um, or Wingard? These are the two dangerous small forwards. And so, you know, I think the issue is, yeah, look, you, you might have put Marley Williams on Bonfries, but I think in the air he would have been exposed. Um, so, look, I mean, it, it wasn't ideal. Look, I, I think it was just a stinker. Like, a lot of a lot of players who you would have banked on uh, having good games would have played really well. And as, as you know, uh, Paul Rue said the other night, uh, you know, wh- why didn't someone kind of uh, put someone to cover West Off or whoever was the the extra in defence. But what he said was basically, uh, you do that and then they put another and another and another. And then, you know, the, the forward the forward line for Collingwood is chopped off and then there's yeah. heaps of space for their pacey, uh, pacey smalls to run into space at the other end. So, look, uh, it was an all-round team disappointment, I think. Uh, and I agree, like, Swan played a terrific game. Marley Williams, I thought, was terrific. Um, but... All round, when you, when so many people, so many players lose their um, lose their lose the lose the competition against their opposition, mm-hmm. and you you're in all sorts of trouble in any any team or any game. It was certainly a disappointing result for the club, and it's probably one of the few times this year that Bucks has been comprehensively outcoached, um, and that uh, well, it's actually two occasions the same the same side. So, um, hope that the uh, that we have learned from the experience, and hope that we have. Well, learn from the season as a whole, a season that has been filled with uh, ups and downs and been riddled with inconsistency. Um, yeah, look, I would, I would say, Peter, though, I don't know if he was out coached. Uh, don't? I just think, you know, well, look, as I said, like, I think if every player played to their potential and mm. played the role, then it wouldn't have been a problem. So, uh, Wingard for if Goldsack wins the competition, then yeah. Wing looks like a loose player, etc. So, when, when the whole team doesn't perform to the standard, um, mm. then that's a that's just a performance issue, you know, rather than a coaching issue. I mean people take it each way, but I'm just saying you can you can you can see from both perspectives, you know, some will say they're a coach, uh, others will say, you know, like that that the players let down the structure. Oh sure, there's no doubt that the, the players that we have didn't play to their potential. Um, as I said, I, I, I can question a few of the moves and say that. Look, I, I, I think for me the disappointing thing was we deviated from a game style uh, and a structure that had worked really well in the last eight weeks. Um, we replaced a Ruckman with a small. In hindsight, um, I probably would have brought in Hudson and not let uh, Grundy ruck by himself. Um there were probably different mashups that we could have made. And it just seemed like Keith was lost, A, in the ruck, and B, up forward. When you had the three tools, the ball comes in, and first of all, it was coming in above their heads. So realistically, it's not the, their, their fault. But when the ball's coming out, you've got three lumbering guys who try as they might to put pressure on. They're not small forwards. They can't, they can't pressure the same way, uh, the, same way the, the guys like Elliot and Dwyer can. So... You have the run out of half back just sliding through the ground, and we're caught unawares each time. So for me, that's tactical as well as it is personnel based. Um, but look, I think I think the team as a whole and the coaching staff as a whole should look back and you know take responsibility for what was a, a pretty poor performance. But um, hopefully, we can take some positives out of this season that we're not just left with this bitter feeling in our mouths. Magpie girl, how have you seen this season as a whole? <laughs> 
Ah, in a nutshell. Um, frustrating, I think, would be the word I'd use. Um, does uh, not only with injuries, uh, I, I just everything about the team has been um, disjointed, and um, I just feel that each week there's been a new problem. There's either been more injury, there's been new people coming in, all of which is good as far as the new people and that go, the new players. But um, I, I just to me that the, the the whole year has just been about lack of lack of rhythm, lack of backup, lack of um, cohesion. It's just it's just been difficult to watch most of the time, and I, I suppose disappointing in some ways. I I, I thought we might have um, peaked a little better, um, but um, it's just I would just sum it up as frustrating. Uh, I think that's certainly uh, certainly one uh, one way to put it. Um, but you did touch on a number of things. With you know, we did have a lot of injuries. It gave us a chance to blood a bit of the youth. Um, Hoggy, how did you see the season in regards to personnel wise and performance as a whole? Uh, personnel wise, if you look at the positives um, on Saturday night, we had six players in the twenty-two that had thirty games or less, and that's an obvious positive providing they are able to step up when, and we'll touch on it later, the big names drop off. And that's not just this year, but when Swan gives away, when, you know, even when Penalty gives away and so on and so forth, they've got to be able to get up to the level where the champions of the club are now. And I can see that with Beams and Sidebottom happening, but, you know, there's still question marks on Seedsman, Williams, uh, Dwyer, and so on. So... In that regard, blooding the players is good. One thing I don't agree, which is said on the forums a lot, is, oh, we've got to give this person a go. We've got to give this person a go. It's, he's had two good games in the VFL. Give him a go. And, no, you should be earning your games. Most teams in most codes, that you know, twenty like in AFL, 28 players, 30 players for the year. Sweet, cool. I, I didn't see a positive of Jackson Payne getting no games. I'll be disappointed if he goes. Um, he's kicked almost 50 goals in the VFL, which is, as Anthony Rocker said a few years ago when he was playing, it's harder to kick goals because the delivery's not up to Pendlebury standard. Um, so it's harder to get on to the ball as a key forward. Um, yep. he, he, I've watched probably six to eight games this year in the VFL. He should have got a go at some stage. Mm. Quinton Lynch kicked nine goals for the year. You know, yep. you know, you know what I'm getting at. Um I, it, it was just an underwhelming year. The, even the games that we we got ahead, we should have been looking to really nail, e.g. Melbourne, Western Bulldogs. We took the foot off the gas. Mm. Perfect. Now, this is what I personally believe, is um, how you finish games, you take on the next week. So, yep. for example, North Melbourne round 23, we took the foot off, we didn't care. Buckley said pretty much we didn't care. Had we started against Port Adelaide, we had one goal in the first quarter and a half. Mm. On, a, on a direct opposite of that, when we overcame GWS, we played Essen the next week and we obliterated them. Yep. Probably our best marginal win of the year. I think the personal highlights of the year were the Geelong game, besides the third quarter, when we took the get, foot off the gas again, and the Sydney away game. Um, that was just a really good contest, which we deserved to win. We overcame a deficit and we just showed, like, oh, I went up there for a game, I did a day trip and I, I loved it. It was just great. It was worth the 400 bucks. That's one of those infuriating things about the team this year, isn't it, that we can play so good at, so, uh, different, at these occasions, at these different times, and yet we can let ourselves down afterwards. Well, that, that's it. And you can put a little bit down to inexperience, but maybe not 23 games into a season, maybe 10. Mm. And then they, sh well, you know, they're... Not many of them were just first year players. Ben Kennedy can give a bit of you know leeway to him, but what Seedsman's been on the list three years. Oh, I personally love Paul Seedsman. I reckon he's yep. got a vital player in, in our lineup for years to come. But um, you know he's a third year. Marley Williams yeah. is what a second year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, they've got experience. They, they should be not lulling like that. 
what are your thoughts on the season seventy six? I know that you're uh, you're pretty passionate about uh, about our year and very supportive of the club. How did you see it all? Uh, look, I think um, I think our year could be summed up by looking at five players, and I've put down five players' names down here. Um, and, and and you can pretty much categorise the other forty two players based on you know where they fit in based on this five. Um, first player's name I've got down here is uh, is Tuvi. Now that speaks for himself. He did his ACL in um, in uh, the Anzac Day game, mm-hmm. and out for season. He's been a big loss this season. We kind of got um, kind of used to, used to him not being there, but you know we had a lot of injuries this season, and, and, and Tuvi was obviously the worst of them. Uh, Williams, I put him down as being the revelation of the season. Um, that's probably being a bit unfair to his last year, his last season. I think he, he had a wonderful debut season last year, and he's really built on that at the club. And he's just he, he's got that bit of aggression that we really need in the team that we've been lacking. Uh, he's hard at the ball. He's he he can um, he's very confident in the way that he moves as well. You know, he's, he's very decisive in his actions on the ground. He's really worked hard on his kicking. I think he really epitomises. Um, Buckley's uh, thoughts on continuous improvement and you know needing needing to get better and you know he's he's been fantastic for this year. Uh, third player I've got down here is is Pendlebury, uh, Mr. Mercurial, Mr. Reliable, just you know gets a job done. Uh, he's obviously had fantastic previous seasons. He did pretty well this season. Uh, you, you know he's going to deliver. Uh, the fourth player's name I've got down here who represents season two thousand and thirteen is Jared Witts. Now, I think fair to say he's probably been the most hyped player come to the club in the last 10 years. Uh, certainly last year he had um, big, big, big raps on him. He didn't play a game last year. He debuted this season. So we got to, we got to see a bit of a, uh, a look at him. Certainly those of us who, who don't get too many VFL games were able to sort of see him in the seniors play a few games. He did a few nice things. He can he can take a contested mark. He's he's popped up for a few goals, but um, yeah, we see he's 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 a bit slow. He's a bit of a wide turning circle. I think any player that comes within eating distance of him is toast. But um, <laughs> if they get a bit further than that, then um, they, they they can happily run rings around him. And I think the most for me the the thing that's really confusing about Wits this year was the last Saturday night's game. Um, the fact that we had Keith there playing key position forward and back up Ruckman when that's a position that Wits really should own in um, in Lynch's absence. And you know, like I, I really it was left me wondering, you know, what does this mean for Wits? Um, oh, obviously, he's a young player. He's, he's, a, he's a big lad. He's going to take a long time to develop. But um, and and look, these these guys don't grow on trees. But you know, gee, I, I, I thought that was quite an indictment on him that he, he wasn't selected on uh, on Saturday night. The final player on on of the five that I've got here, which epitomises our list for 2013 and our year for 2013, is Alan Didak. Now he's obviously a crowd favourite. It's been fantastic to sort of see the reception he's got at the MCG when he's come out onto the ground as a sub and uh, you know when he's popped up to to kick a goal. He's, a, he's, a, he's been a wonderful servant of the club. Um, look, it's really sad to see that um, yeah, that he's had to, he's finishing his career at Collingwood um, with his, his Collingwood employment. Um, but it's, it's sad to see too that he's not bowing out gracefully, and that you know like he does have um, plans to, to try and play another season or two. In his own words, um, look, he played five games this year. Any senior player of that age who's played five games, the writing's on the wall. Um, you know they're, they're, they're going to come to an end. Mm. Um, look, fantastic servant. I mean, footy's harsh. I mean, you can't you can't play on forever. Um, no. <laughs> it, it's, it's sad that he's, he's not coming back next year, but I, I think just that's the reality of modern day football. You've only got so many places on your list. You've got a salary cap, um, and look, if you want to be chasing. Premierships, you can't be too sentimental about things. No. Uh, so so that was, that, that, that's a, a mixed bag of five players, which I think for me just, you know, look, it's all over the shop. And really that's what our 2013 season was. Um, look, we ended up in, in eighth place. Um, 
it's kind of <laughs> kind of a bit of a story as to how we got there. Mm. But um, uh, yeah, we just didn't. It was frustrating. We never got traction. Um, and look, we need to make a lot of changes in this off season. Um, hopefully, we do a better year next year. You certainly, you certainly right. And the players you've named have all got obviously significance in the side for the different roles they've had to play or haven't played this year. Um, certainly in Didac's case. Um, what about yourself, Spicy? I mean, are you disappointed in general by this year, or is it about what you expected? Uh, look, I mean, you'd be disappointed, obviously. But look, I, there's reasons for that, and I think this is the, the thing people have to take on board. You know, we we all want to win a premiership. Uh, it's got the smell of 2009 almost about it, you know, like kind of, you know, win, winning games and then losing games we shouldn't have, shouldn't have lost. But I think continuity, I would say, is a theme um, which has permeated the season. And and it's it's happened for two, two seasons now. Uh, injuries, experience, and in some ways effort. But look, just on the injuries, now... You know, I mean, the fact that we've blooded all these new players, part of it's a natural attrition, a bit of a turnaround and, and having to forward plan. Uh, but, you know, look, some some key injuries to, to you know, really, really key players like Dane Beans, uh, Luke Ball, you know, kind of last year, uh, Reid and so on. I, I think it's, you know, it's, it's done some damage and I, I don't want to make excuses to say that that's the only reason that we've, we've, we've dropped off. But I think there's significant um, significant issues in the team. Um, 76 mentioned, you know, for example, Wits versus Keith. Look, um, I think that the problem there in that game, particularly versus Port, was that we had too many tools. We had an abundance of tools. And when we played Hudson or Wits or whatever or Keith, I think we, we need someone who's going to be a, a key rack and someone who can play a, a, a genuine dual position. I don't think Wits could have done that with Grundy. I don't think Hudson could have done that with Grundy. I think we tried it with Keith. Uh, didn't quite work. Uh, he, you know, but he's an, ex, an experienced player in terms of sports. I didn't know what he was doing. His ass from his elbow, I think Keith really there. Um, but, you know, look, I, 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 the, the positives really are the young players coming through. I think Sam Dwyer... Has had a such a, a great season. Now he, he's not a big kicker, but he's he's got a good side step. He's evasive. He's not particularly quick, but he makes good decisions. He, he's such a good decision maker. Uh, Marley Williams. Um, now look, there might be an issue if we think he's kicking a suspect like Alan Tuvey. So we might have a Tuvey and a Marley Williams. We're both hard shut down players, and there's questions over the. Um, you yeah, know, kicking skills, but I mean, Buckley's obviously determined to to, to fit the game plan to get a get a, a list together, which is able to, to do that. Our uh, seedsman, I think, is terrific. You know, takes the game on, long kick, pretty good disposal. I think. Um, you know, obviously, you know, Grundy's a revelation. I mean, to expect a ruckman at that age to come in and play the way he did. Oh, I think it was brilliant. Uh, I think we've got you know people waiting in the wings. I think uh, um, what's his name? Uh, Kyle Martin was incredibly unlucky, unlucky yeah. enough, you know, to get an elevation. You know, it was just touch and go whether it's going to be him or um, your choir. Uh, <coughs> have a cough. Um, and then uh, Frost, you know, good backup, blah blah blah. So look. I, you know, in the absence of Dale Thomas too, he, he's he's an enormous player. I mean, people underrate his his pace, his hardness, his head marking, his kicking is very good. Uh, he's a gut player, he's a gut runner. Uh, we haven't had him all year. Um, look, so it's, it's there, there are elements which are disappointing, but in terms of the future, I, you know, look, I, I think it looks too, too, terrific to me in terms of what's dropped off and what we've gained. Um, so I'm, I wouldn't say I'm bullish about next year. I, 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 I'd say I'm a realist more than an optimist or a miserableist. Put it that way. You know, like that, that Collingwood's not going to be top of the pops next year, um, but they're not total shit. 
that they are a club which is having to rebuild. They've been in the final eight years in a row, more than any other team in the competition right now. Yeah. And if anyone thinks he can defy gravity for any length of time like that and not have some kind of uh, need to rebuild and, and impact, uh, they're kidding themselves. They're in their group. Uh, but so, oh, that's, that's my synopsis. But, um, but look, it, look, it's certainly an interesting discussion. It's one that um, we'll continue to debate over the coming weeks because I doubt that we have heard the end of our delistings, heard the end of um, the, the issues that we're having uh, internally. Um, and, I, and I certainly certainly think there'll be a little bit more player movement uh, before, well, certainly before the uh, the trade period and the draft period, period end. I'd like to move on to the quick questions. And the first one is for you, 76. Is the Buckley regime a dictatorship unseen since the 1940s? <laughs> um, you to say it was a Nazi regime. Yeah. I, I noticed that person's been banned. <laughs> um, look, yeah, look, um, <laughs> I wouldn't want to make comparisons there, but it's a certainly not a democracy. No, no, it's certainly not a democracy. What about what are your thoughts on it, uh, on Old Spice? Well, look, I, I haven't come across any club that's a democracy as such, like any uh, corporation or whatever. People run it and the people who know what they're doing run it. Um, yeah, that's, it's not quite a Nazi dictatorship, you know. Uh, I'll, I'll, probably, I'll gently say no. 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 Okay, Magpie Girl, was it a good idea to sign Marley Williams till 2016? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think he's... Um He's a new, exciting player. Um, he's really um, improved a lot this year, and he can only get better. Hoggy, what are your thoughts on it? Providing he doesn't end up in the clink, yes. <laughs> I, th- I think this is just our uh, insurance policy if he does. Uh, <laughs> 76, who should be our captain in 2014? Oh, look, uh, I've got a soft spot for Luke Ball. I think he's the right man for the job. Uh, you've, you've changed your tune from uh, Nick, Wa- Nick Maxwell. We've uh, had a discussion a few weeks ago, and um, I think you were pretty happy to have Nick retain the captaincy until he retired. Uh, look, he's, he's, he's signed on for an extra year, and yeah. um, look, it's good to have him around. But yeah, look, I, th- I think I think um, yeah, I've, I've I think Luke Ball is the man. What are your thoughts, Spicy? Well, look, uh, I've, I've got a conflicted because I, I, you know, I've got a um, a relationship with uh, Nick writing for him, but uh, look, um, look, well, you know, it's a, therefore I'll go with what he said, which is, you know, whatever the players think. But I, I personally think probably probably Kemba will take over. It's my personal view. Yeah, what are your thoughts on it, Hoggy? Yeah, Penbury is next cap off the rank. He's vice captain for a reason this year. It's got to be him. And what about yourself, Magpie Girl? Big issue for the club here, the captaincy. Um, well, I think it will be Pendlebury, but I'd rather it be Ball. I'm at 76. Yeah. Oh, very, very interesting. Should Nathan Buckley be given a contract extension, Hoggy? Not until the results of 2014 are known. No. What are your thoughts on that, uh, 76? Absolutely, he should be given a contract extension. And the reason for that is because it sends a message that... Uh, everybody is behind the changes he's making. It gives him the support he needs to do what he needs to do. There's no excuses. Uh, and look, I'll just point out too, just because you're giving a coach a contra- contract extension, it doesn't mean that you keep him on for that length of time. That's um, for sure. So, I mean, if we gave him a two-year extension, there's no reason we can still uh, show him the door at the end of 2014 if his results justify it. But um, look, it would send a powerful message, and um, so I think it would be a good thing. Uh, that's a very good point uh, Old Spice who is going to win the Brownlow this year well uh, God um, uh, uh, Selwood I don't know S- S- Selwood you don't know fair enough S- is S- Pendlebury S- a chance do you reckon Hoggy uh, not Penry. I have someone on my little spreadsheet higher than Penry. I have him top three, I think, from memory. I think it'd be Ablett. 
then Selwood, and then Swan. My smoky is Barlow, with my real, real, real rough smoky is Jared Bay. Oh, very <laughs> interesting. What was that, Mac? My girl? No, I didn't say anything. <laughs> oh, I thought I thought that. I thought you said something. Quite good. Um, right. And we'll go around the table for the last one. Uh, our tip for the premiership for myself, it's Hawthorne. What about yourself, seventy six? Yeah, Hawthorne. Magpie girl. Mm, I don't know. Everyone thought Hawthorne last year. Um, hmm. Um, I don't know. Um, okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll find out in a couple of weeks. What about yourself, Hoggy? Your thoughts? Uh, Freeman, I think they'll rock down Hawthorne. Freeman, it's very interesting. And Old Spice. I was going to say Essendon, but I'm with Hoggy. I'm going free. Uh, yeah, free <laughs> uh, Fantastic. Look, guys, it's been fantastic chatting with you all. Um, I think we've given Meisterbot a fair bit of uh, editing to do. But um, I'd like to thank you all for coming on. It has been a difficult week. It's always difficult when Collingwood are mathematically and literally eliminated from finals contention. It's even harder when Carlton finish above you for the first time in probably a decade. Um, so it's been a rough week, but thank you for coming aboard and having a chat. Magpie Girl, it's always a pleasure. Thanks, one too. Old Spice, uh, let's not make it this long between drinks next time, eh? Hey? I love you guys. <laughs> uh, Hoggy, thank you very much for being aboard. No worries, any time. And 76, great to have you around again and uh, we'll uh, we'll certainly chat soon. Yeah, it's good to be on here. And um, just before we go, Mighty T, um, I hear we've got a bit of a bit of an interview that you've, you've done coming up after this. We do. Uh, after this, uh, I had the pri- sorry. I had the privilege of um, interviewing Dale's Happing um, late last week, a VFL coach for the Collingwood Magpies. Um, the interview will come up directly after this segment. It was a, a brilliant discussion, really candid, um, really free flowing. And I'd like to thank the football club and Dale for his time. He was incredibly generous, um, and it's a great gesture. And it's good to see the club getting uh, getting behind us and doing its best for its uh, its fans and its supporters um, all around the country. So. Please tune in and have a listen. It's uh, yeah, really, really interesting stuff. But um, but yeah, for now that uh, that brings us to an end. That this is the Mighty T signing out. Hello, everyone. This is Peter Tokus from the Collingwood Big Footy. Uh, board podcast and with me today I have a very special guest uh, VFL coach for the Collingwood Football Club Dale Tapping. Dale thank you so much for being a part of the show. No worries Peter how are you? Uh, Not doing too badly not doing too bad looking forward to a good weekend of football ahead and uh, hopefully a good result for the Pies on the weekend. Yeah well um, yeah with the uh, Port Adelaide you know the boys playing Port Adelaide tomorrow night Um, yeah it'd be exciting so had a good preparation this week, so we'd like to think that you know, we're going we're gonna to make a good account of it. Well, let's hope so. But from the VFL standpoint, the weekend didn't uh, turn out the way we uh, were anticipating. Yeah, um, I look obviously disappointing to um, disappointing to, to lose, and you know, basically, as I said, the players at, at the end of the game. And yeah, when you when you play finals footy and you and you get to you get to that point of the year, it doesn't matter. You know, um, doesn't matter how far you go. When you lose, it's always going to be disappointing. But I think it's I think it's pretty important too to just to to take in and remember, you know, sort of a where we've come from yep. and what we what we've had to what we've had to develop and um, and the challenges that we've we've sort of faced through the year in terms of um, you know using 58 players. Mm. Um, yeah, you know, we had we had um, yeah you know, we've had we've had a really we've had a really good year. I think there's there's been some really um, positive foundations sort of put in place in terms of our our VFL team going forward. Um, uh, yeah, given that we we've, we've pretty much come from equal last last year and yeah. you know either last or second last in every key statistical category yeah. um, to you know to now be in the top four or five in in most. Um, I think um, I think we're, I think we've, we've we've made a significant impact on the competition and um, and and also too you, you, you know look you, you look at our team on the weekend like outside Darren Jolly and Ben Hudson like our average age of the players was twenty yeah. 
So, um, yeah, very, very young team. And um, But having said that, it was disappointing. We got off to a slow start and, um, you know, and, and, and the Port Melbourne and Port Melbourne who have played in the last two grand finals at that level and very experienced and and I think some, won something like about 30 of their last, you know, 33 or 34 games at home. Yep. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're always a tough team to beat. But, yeah, you know, it was a great experience for us and, you know, I'm sure... Yeah, I'm sure all our players, and in particular our younger guys, will yeah, will take a hell of a lot from the game itself. Um, yeah, just even speaking to them during the week, look, we, yeah, it was a great experience for them and the, and the physicality, and mm. um, yeah, it, it'll it'll stand it'll stand them in good in good stead. So yeah, we we just we we don't we don't want to you know we sort of just don't want to hang our hat on that one game as as much as disappointing the result didn't go for us. But you know, I think the impact that we've had we've made through the year. Mm. Against, um, yeah, we played. Yeah, you look at look at the teams we played for a team that's won eight games the previous two years to play all the top four teams twice and um, and compete really really strongly with them and, and beat them on 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 on, uh, on most occasions. Um, I think I think sort of says it sort of gives you an indication of sort of yeah, what direction we're heading in. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. I think that it's been. A remarkable turnaround of form um, from last year to this year. I think that we've made yep. improvements in a lot of areas. Um, Two-part question. One, did the VFL team meet the goals that the club had set for at pre-season? And I guess the second part is, where did you see uh, the improvement come from? Uh, what areas in particular? Um, answer to your first question, like there was, there was really, in terms of the where where we had to get to at the start of the year, it was all about, it was all about Improving because we needed to, um, and where that where that improvement was going to come from, and and how and where um, and to what limit it was going to go to, no one you know, no one really knew. I think yeah, we just wanted to improve, and um, yeah, it was probably not dissimilar to what Port Adelaide have done this year. But Port Adelaide have you know, you hear Ken in, uh, Ken Hinckley talk, he he doesn't put a ceiling on where they go. He just says, well, we just want to continue to get better, which they have, yep. and uh, and we probably had that same philosophy but I think you know to, to the latter question to the latter part of your question like as I said to the players pre-season the, the very very first night I put up all our 2012 statistics and um, and just key indicators and and so that you know we had something like about 38 people in that room at that time um, you know, going for 21 spots, and for a number of those guys, it didn't mean anything too. But for a number of them, it did because they'd been part of that 211, 212 period, and some in 210. But yeah, we were we were last or second last in every key category. So yeah, we we really set. Yeah, we started the ball rolling right from the very first night. So our our whole program was under no illusions that we had to improve in every aspect of our game and it was no point holding that conversation to January because it was going to be too late. Yeah. We we needed to talk about that in the 14th of November which we did. And and really it was progression from there. The other thing too I think it was the environment um you know really you know we put a lot of work into the VFL environment in terms of creating a really positive learning challenging environment for the VFL boys. Yeah. Um yeah everyone on our VFL list this year played a game. Yeah. Our whole 21 players played. Yeah, um, that's you know, which is which is you know if you look at Essendon and um and those players they didn't play they didn't play all their players. We did. Yeah, you know, we were averaging we were averaging 10 players a week. Um, so yeah, I think I think yeah, the, just the natural progression of our VFL list. Like we we didn't have any big names. If anything, we lost a couple. When you know, obviously Chris Pendlebury went to Werribee, Ricky Ferrara, who was a solid player for us in 212. We didn't really replace them, or we did, but we just replaced them with some kids. But the, the, just the, the guys that we had around the place, I just thought they'd improve just by being around the system anyway. Mm. Um, and and it coupled with the way we trained and the standards that we set and the challenges that we set for them and we just sort of we we just started to gain some confidence in, in what we're doing and yeah we 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 got off to a, you know we beat Northside that first game um, 
you know, we pushed Werribee to eight points in round two, who, you know, pre-season were talked up as the, the VFL favourites. Um, you know, who have we beat in the last game? Um, and they, and when you look at their VFL team, their VFL team is really star-studded. Mm. And, and even their VFL players have played 40 or 50 AFL games. Yep. Like, our, our guys have nowhere near that experience. And, you know, we've been able to compete with that type of team in round two and beat them in, in the last round. Yeah. Um, so I think I think just the confidence in terms of how we trained, just the standards we set, um, and, we're, and look, and you know, there's a couple of things that we changed um, in terms of our our um, our meetings and um, how we prepared, you know, our session, our last session before the game, and and just created a really good, strong team environment. It was all about team. Um, it was all about. Um, you know, we had a number of AFL experienced guys come back um, this year, but it was never about, it was always about what knowledge they could impart on our younger players. It was, and obviously, that if they brought that attitude back, it was only going to, it could only help their performance because if they were, if they were helping others, mm. it was only going to make their performance better. It's, yeah. it's common sense will tell you that. So we just we just sort of attacked it from those sort of, um, those sort of angles. But the, but the bottom line, it was a lot of hard work. Like, yeah. Um, yeah, um, yeah, we, and you know, obviously we'll rest up, and yeah, we, we'll, we'll yeah, the, yeah, once it all starts again, everyone will be even again, and you, you try to improve again. But, but I think there's been some sound, there's been some good solid foundations put in place in terms of standards and what the requirements are. Um, yeah, maybe last year at times that that yeah, players didn't know where what the standards were and what the parameters were, but yeah, they, they were sort of really. They were really clear for everyone, and um, and to the and to the players' credit, well, they 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 were fantastic. They they worked really hard at it. No, that's fantastic. Yeah, look, it certainly mm-hmm. seems that there's a lot of effort and a lot of resource that's gone in towards uh, making the VFL as competitive as possible. Um, yep. I guess you've already touched on this, but I'm I'm curious to know when players, you know, Veal, Cavallan, Didac, and Darren Jolly come down to yep. the VFL. What's yeah. the impact they have on the group as a whole? Um, and, I mean, what, what do they bring to the table playing at you know, a slightly lower level to what they're generally accustomed to? Well, what they bring is really up to them because, you know, you talk, you know, Darren Jolly or as in, you know, did this case like just, um, you know, they're, they're both AFL Premiership players. They're, um, you know, Joel's case, you know, two-time Premiership player. You know, did is an All-Australian. Um, it's really what they bring is it's up to them, and that's 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 something that all our senior players, even when Daisy Thomas played his couple of games, was just the energy and um, that he brought. Um, yeah, you know, Alan Didac's attitude this year was absolutely just fantastic, um, yeah. just fantastic with the younger guys, fantastic for me as a coach. Um, and Darren Jolly in the latter part of the year come back obviously off his knee. They were all really, really good. Ben Hudson, um, and we we often spoke about it, you know, what they could bring and often I would, you know, you know, ask them in team meetings and you know, what they could you know, what they can bring and what we can do for them. Mm. Um, yeah, you know, it's it's not only what they do for us, but what we can do for them because you know, everyone, you know, everyone knew that, you know, Alan Dyack was striving really hard to get back to AFL footy. Um, and it's fantastic to see him back and, yep. uh, and doing well. Um, and, and, and in Joel's case, yeah, obviously, yeah, him coming back and trying to get his injury up to speed and and get back to some of his best form. Yeah. So, yeah, it's but it's sort of two part. Like they've got to bring a they've got to bring an attitude that they can invest in in the team and um, and and obviously, you know, what their teammates can do for them. But as I said, if if they come down and they they impart their knowledge and really go out of their way to help their teammates, well, then it's going to be reciprocated on the way back. Absolutely. That's how it normally works. And, and that's what we just tried to coach. It was never about putting them on a pedestal and mm. saying, well, we've got Alan Didak, we've got Darren Jolly, yeah, they'll be okay. Yep. Um, yeah, often you've still, got, you've still got to coach them and you've still got to you know, set challenges for them. And but look, they're, they're just a couple of examples, but all our all our players this year that come back, um, you, you, I couldn't question their attitude towards playing VFL footy. They were all very very good, and um, and and Dibs in particular because that's a, a common one that I get asked about, and um, and he, his attitude was terrific, and I think that's showing now because his footy has been he's actually had a very good he's actually if you weigh it all up all his games mm-hmm. he's actually had a very good season. I know it's all a majority of it's been at a VFL level, but mm. you know, the way he's playing, the last two weeks, the way he's playing AFL level, is how he's really played at VFL level. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, now he's doing it with better players around him and he's he's going well. So yeah, we yeah, I know I'm I'm really pleased that he's back to his best and um and, and playing good footy and I'm sure he'll he'll do well tomorrow night. Well, I, I certainly hope so. I've seen a lot of his games at BFL. I thought he's played um, mm-hmm. some really good football. Um, in mm-hmm. terms of the game style between the AFL and the VFL side, yeah. is, there, is there a symmetry between the two? I mean, do, do, uh, yeah. Do, I mean, yeah. Do, oh, look, no, yeah. Sorry, mate. No, go on. I was just going to say, do both, do, both, do both sides go out to play a similar brand of football? Yeah, similar. Oh, look, a lot of majority of them, you know, because obviously we're, we're, you know, we've got, you know, our AFL, AFL, um, AFL boys all together, so you know we we train together during the week. Our VFL boys come in on a Wednesday night, and obviously I take responsibility for that. But there's no there's no disconnect at all. Yeah, there might be subtle changes from week to week. Yeah. Um, but on a whole, that yeah, you know, we we want to move the ball the same way. Um, yeah, you know, we want to defend the same way. Um, and that's how they're trained. So it's, it's pretty hard to. Yeah, you know, particularly if we've got 13 or 14 AFL boys yeah. playing, and particularly younger guys to to try to change them on game day. So um, yeah, it'd be unfair to do that. But but is, is that is that the goal? The ultimate goal is for the VFL team to play a similar brand of football to the AFL side. Oh, that's yeah, pretty much so. Yeah, yeah, that's how we want to attack it. Yeah, no. we want to play. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, that's that, that's brilliant. I mean, you mean you do see those those results translate across. A couple more questions, and I'll let you go because I know you're a busy man. Yeah. Yeah, no, um, which of the young boys do you think um, has been most impressive, whether they be AFL or VFL listed, um, and who are some names to watch out for for next year? Oh, I think um, I think I think guys like um, you know, just to go through the AFL younger guys like mm-hmm. I think guys like yeah you know, Tim Broomhead will really benefit from the preseason. Like, he came into the season, you know, he missed three months of glandular fever. Yep. Um, he's got to put a bit of weight on, um, and yeah, there's some aspects of his game. You know, he's developed it. There's some really good things that, about what he does. He's got you know great skills, and um, you know, he can improve his fitness and conditioning. I think he, he's upside. He, he could certainly you know push in and play some AFL footy next year. You know, I think obviously Kyle Martin's one that sort of just just on that on that edge that you know he's a he's a he's a prominent VFL. Player. He's just got to take it to another level. Um, yeah, he's got. Um, yeah, he's got to improve. Um, just yeah, just his ability to run and cover the ground a lot more because that's the that's the demands that will be placed on him at AFL level. Um, yeah, Grundy's already. Yeah, Grundy's already there. I, I, I wouldn't have thought you'll see you'll see him at VFL level too often, um, if any. Um, yeah, he's he's a, he's a standout and. Um, yeah, he was he was always really impressive when he was playing. Um, yeah, Adam Oxley, I think, has got a really good intelligent footy brain. I think, yeah, with a bit of size and a bit more fitness and strength about what he does, can develop into a good player. Mm-hmm. I still think Caleb Mooney's a um, yeah his second year, his second year, and he, he's come from a come from another country to play yeah you know, to play a game. I, I think yeah he's, he's he's had a pretty solid BFL season. Um, you know, Jackson Payne's only, you know, just turned 20. You know, he's kicked nearly 50 goals at VFL level this year. Not many players do that. Well, he's, um, he's, one, he's one that, I mean, I really wanted to talk to you about. Sorry for cutting you yeah. off. But, I mean, yeah. he's one that the Collingwood face will have a real eye on. And I believe you coached him at under-18s level. How's he progressed? Um, and what does he need to do to get into the side? Well, I think what he's got to do is continue to develop his, his game. And what, what he, you yeah, know, I spoke to him the other day about, you know, just some... Yeah, you know, just some areas of his game, and like a, he's marking. That's his strong suit. But yeah. it's also too when the ball hits the ground, and just his ability. The way the game now, like teams are rolling back to defend, and just his ability to switch on to that um, mm. more consistently. Um, sometimes you can do it really well. Sometimes you can sort of, you know, you can sort of be reactive in doing that. Um, and also too, just when the ball hits the ground, like his repeat effort, and he'll give the repeat effort. But it's about being cleaner with the repeat effort. Yep. Um, like he can be, he can be a bit fumbly below his knees, so he needs to work on his hands and just mm. be below, you know, just below his knee skills. Mm. Um, but he, he's, he's again, he's, yeah, you know, the second year players, like they're going to take time. Yeah, you know, Jared Witts is another one that I think, yeah, you know, like he, he's, he, he had a taste. I think he had six AFL games this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's yeah he's on a different journey to Brody Grundy, and it'd be unfair to compare them because 
you know, one's a, one comes from New South Wales and um, they didn't grow up with the game, has been introduced to the game, where the other one has been playing the game since he was three years old, or four years old, you know. Um, it's a big difference. And, you know, Jared Witts, I've got no doubt, will get to where he needs to go, but it'll be on a different path. And I think people have just got to, you know, at the moment he's probably getting compared to Grundy because Grundy's come in and had a really significant impact. Mm. And, and Jared hasn't had that, but I've got no doubt he will in time. And um, I think those two are going to be a pretty powerful combination for a long time. But you know, in the next 12 or 18 months, I think Jared will start to... You, know, you saw a little bit of it this year. And um, I think um, yeah, you, you'll see a little bit more of that consistency and belief and confidence that'll, that'll, that'll come out. So, yeah, there is, there is, some, um, there is some upside. And he, yeah, he's, he's just on a different, he's on a different path to... You know, to um, yeah, they're all on their own journey in a way. But, um, you know, some get there a bit quicker than others. I know that uh, Jake Kelly played his first VFL final on the weekend. He's yep. a Peter yep. father-son prospect. What are your thoughts on yep. him? How does he look? Um, yeah, good. Like, he, he, I didn't know too much about him until a few weeks ago, and he played North Ballarat the where he game and um, obviously the final. And, uh, yeah, certainly, like, physically um, acquitted himself really well. Um, yeah, position-wise, very disciplined, um, very fit player. Um yeah, carries the ball really well. Um, yeah, he loves the contest. Uh, you yeah, know, which which you'd expect, sort of being a Kelly. Um, yeah, I think, and I think what he just what he needs to develop is that you know that Jake's um, yeah still at school. Mm. I think what he needs to develop is, um, and and that'll come with just training and conditioning and just um, being around more senior senior footballers it's just the decision making and just um, advancement in his skills um, yeah, making better decisions with the ball understanding his um, better field position when to defend when to attack and that just comes with just playing and yep. playing at this level and but yeah he's off to a good start like he's he's acquitted himself um yeah quite well in the three vfl games he's played and um yeah he certainly didn't look out of place so i think that yeah i will one point it gives him confidence mm. and i think uh, it sort of gives um obviously you know the, the football club some confidence there yeah, there, there, there may be a play there so um, yeah, he, um, he was he was certainly one of the you know, positives from a from a uh, younger you know, younger end anyway. We certainly love the romance of a good father son selection. One last question for you, and I'll let yep. you go. Um, yep. Do you ever hold, or do you hold any aspirations to hold a senior coaching position in the AFL? Um, I've actually asked this a uh, couple of times this week. Like, um, <laughs> I look, I. I um I look I just enjoy the coaching full stop and I've always just enjoyed yeah, you know, just enjoyed the game and you know, to be honest with you, if I could play I would. Um but obviously I'm getting a bit older now, so um and yeah, you know, and that's that's becomes impossible. So um but yeah, look I've just really enjoyed the game and, and my philosophy's always been to sort of just enjoy what I do and try to do it as well as I can and, and I, I sort of don't need I don't I don't, um, yeah, you know, I, I don't want to sort of change that philosophy because I think it's, you know, throughout my coaching the last, you know, the last sort of ten or so years, which I've, you know, coached at, um, it, it just gives, um, yeah, that's sort of been a really, um, you know, good part of, yeah, you know, I think my approach, like a, a sort of just deal with what I'm dealing with and um, handle what's in front of me and try to do it as best I can and where that takes you. Well, who knows if it, if it continues to progress? Well, yeah, of, of course you'd, you'd you'd look at those opportunities. But um, yeah, at the moment, you know, I'm coaching, you know, calling his VFL team and trying to do it as best I can. And and yeah, if that goes high, well, um, yeah, that that'll be fantastic. So yeah, you just I think you just um, you just try to do it, do as well as you can with with what you're doing at that point in time. Yeah, of course. Look, we're certainly, we're certainly very happy to have you around the club. Um, I certainly enjoy coming down to Victoria Park, watching the VFL, listening to the uh, the quarter time speeches. It's look, it's, it's good to have you aboard, Dale. And I'd like to, you know, from 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 all the uh, all the Collingwood fans out there, I'd like to thank you very much for being so generous with your time and for coming no on worries. and uh, and having the interview. And uh, hopefully, we'll get to speak to you again in the future. And uh, yeah, good luck on another finals campaign. Well, sorry, a finals campaign for the VFL side and another campaign for next year. Yeah, no worries. Thanks very much, Pete. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Cheers, mate. Bye.
Hello, this is Zane for Seg- Friend of the Season segment for Pies Podcast. You guys have chosen me to do the podcast on a possible swan trade. Well, the swan trade was came up basically with me. It's not, it wasn't anything I heard or anything that's been said, but just what I've seen because Buckley has been playing swan in the, um, basically more as a forward, which, yeah, sure he can do a few goes, shows he can take some time, take some good marks, but he's not in the midfield where he can have the, his best impact, which he seems to be doing. He played a bit in the middle, but, you know, not the, all the time. I mean, he didn't play a bit much, much of in the midfield in the elimination final, which is probably the biggest game of the, the biggest game of the season. He just left them forward, which even it, could have understand him starting up forward and he put him in the midfield because we're down. But I didn't see that happen very much. And again, the whole team didn't play all that well, and there's no urgency in the in the game. So you know. That's what happened, and, and, and during the season, he p- mostly played, Swan played up forward instead of in the midfield. We did play a bit in the midfield, but he was mostly the forward. That makes me think that Swan is a possibility of getting traded. And what the trades I've been hearing is that you were sending in GWS for Jonathan Patton or Tom Boyd, or slash the first round, first overall pick of this draft, and both would be great gets, so... Pence has his knee injuries, so that could be a bit of a worry, but they're both players who could be put alongside um, Cloak and help a hell of a lot, and it could have, it'd be great for the development. So that's my segment for today, for this podcast. So I'll see you next podcast, which is probably be about the free agency and trade period. So I'll see you then. Bye. <laughs>